to the Fantasy Footballers Podcast with your hosts, Andy Holloway, Jason Moore, and Mike Wright. Oh, welcome in. It's not football time. Oh, man, what day is it? <laughs> <laughs> did you just panic? I did. You were you- afraid. Oh, you had a panic. It's football time that started. Oh, but you realized man. it during. Oh, I, that was wonderful. I was, I was scrolling through the sheet like, okay, we're, you know, this is what we're doing today. And I saw the Thursday night preview. And then in my head, it just went, it's Thursday. Oh, no. It's uh, <laughs> <laughs> it's like Jason's <laughs> David Johnson moment. Oh, well, welcome in. No, no football, Mike. No football today. Well, that sucks. Honestly, I was I, I'm cool with the break. <laughs> the two day, one day, whatever. I need a couple days to recover from what I don't know if you guys know this. Place. This is the first day in twenty seven days without football. That's <laughs> that's how it feels. <laughs> that is how it feels. So Mike, you did it was hard for you to mess up, but you did. Wednesday, December sixteenth. Found the one, yeah. Welcome in. Uh <laughs> Brooks is still employed. Uh, Brooks is here. How are you, sir? Doing great. Brooks, okay. Let's be honest. Brooks is employing us at this point. That is true. Things have really taken a turn. A uh, lot of lucrative business uh, business moves have paid off. Shared a picture of Brooks's manor on uh, my Twitter yesterday. That's actually and, his summer home. Right. Yes. They, which one has the Fabergé eggs? I don't remember. All of them, really. I, if Brooks is <laughs> Brooks is the only person I know who has a home for every season. It's right, not just summer right. and winter. There is also autumn and a spring home. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So those are. Uh, I mean, it's a lot to maintain. So we respect that about him. Yeah, well, I don't he doesn't, mean, he I don't doesn't mean, do it. Yeah, I don't yeah. Maintain it's, that's, oh, his, <laughs> that's his is staff. That, is that what Al Borland's for? <laughs> Does Al Borland take care of your places? Yeah. And Debo, since he knows how to handle a few. Mm. No, no, Debo's Mm. out. Okay. We've got a busy show today. Some news and notes to talk about. Thursday night preview. No, it's not football time. And uh, we'll get into some mailbag today. We've got some 2021 questions mixed in as well for those of you uh, who, you know, maybe uh, maybe the first first round uh, you face Miles Sanders or something, something like that. But we have a we have a fun show today. I did want to give a shout out. We got a message uh, over at jointhefoot.com from one of our listeners who's on the front lines and uh, coordinating the rollout of this COVID vaccine. I think which you know so many of us are so excited about and and transitioning to a more normal world. But I, did, I we've heard from lots of uh, Foot Clan people that are in the uh, essential worker and frontline healthcare worker category, and uh, they've messaged us to say. You know, thanks for the the reprieve of the podcast. And uh, look, all we do is we just make poop jokes and dad jokes. That's what we do. <laughs> you do the important work. So I did want to give a special shout out to everybody that has been in that category, in that healthcare frontline worker, essential worker during this last nine months of of mayhem in our in our world. So uh, thank you so much for what you do. Uh, YouTube.com slash the fantasy footballers. You can watch the show over there. And subscribe, click the bell. Mike is waving at you. That is uh, just for you, YouTube. The wave is just for you. Yes. And uh, it's time for some buy, sell. Buy or sell, presented by Pristine Auction. Well, last year, last week was maybe our worst buy, sell of the year. Mm. Two for nine? <laughs> Is that what I'm seeing? Whoops. <laughs> uh, we all sold Alvin Kamara. Okay, so we were united on selling Alvin Kamara as a top 10 running back. Andy. He finished at 10 on the dot. Oh, uh, that's ridiculous. I'm sure that's, we can find a scoring format where we were right. That's a Brooks, backdoor what are you cover. doing? Yeah, that's like back- that, uh, the Ravens safety. Oh, my gosh. <laughs> yeah. Uh, Tyler Lockett. Top 15 wide receiver. I sold Just that. Just a bit outside. I got bullied f- into that one by Jason. I was trying to stand up for my man. Thank you. Wide receiver 47. And Jason's like, keep believing in Tyler Lockett because I do. And I'm like, oh, okay. Not Lockett. Not Lockett. <laughs> oh, um, Marvin Jones, top 24 wide receiver. 
he ended up not doing that. So I saw it. Jason was right. Mm -hmm. Week 15 buy sell. Kyler Murray against Philadelphia. Is he a top 10 quarterback this week against Philly? Man, I I don't think so. And he has he has not been for three straight weeks now. That's right. Um, actually, this is the top ten line. It's been four straight weeks that he hasn't been top ten in uh, six point passing leagues. And the reality is, I think that Philadelphia is re-energized. We we said this through the season that their defense is actually really really good. But when they're put in terrible field position, terrible situations, they're on the field the entire game, they can't play up to the talent that's on that defense. The offense obviously has been dealing with a lot of injury, but they're actually getting a little bit healthier now, and they have a quarterback. So he, it's also a quarterback that, you know, because he's mobile and puts a lot of yards on the ground and the clock keeps running and, you know, the game slows down, you don't get as many opportunities uh, on the other side of the ball. So I, I think he's – I I I'm willing to play him. He's got the rushing baseline. Um, I don't look at him as I'm going away from this matchup, but I do temper my expectations. I think he finishes outside the top ten. I'm going to sell. Yeah, I'm going to buy it. Rushing attempts were up last week. They had that game under control. He did not have to uh, do a whole lot in the second half. Didn't need to. It's, it's just ironic we're having this conversation because there was no one more consistent through 11 weeks than Kyler Murray. Saw some of the rushing attempts go down. I liked them back up last week, 47 rushing yards. I'm going to buy it. Taysom Hill was the QB 11 last week. I mean, almost 300 passing yards, a couple of uh, passing touchdowns. <sighs> Top 10, though, I, I will buy it with Andy. Yeah. Okay. Kyler, I'm looking at my rankings. I mean, I have him just inside of the top 10. So the, the, the easy hedge bet would be to say he's not going to make it, but I'm, I, I would play him. Yeah. Uh, Deandre Swift at Tennessee buy or sell 75 total yards. Likely no Matthew Stafford in this one. What do you guys think about Deandre Swift came back from the injury, the concussion and illness last week, obviously the most dynamic runner, but they still have a loyalty. It seems to Adrian Peterson snaps. Well, they, DeAndre, they had a limited role plan for DeAndre Swift or, you know, a little bit more limited. That's just still turned into 50 yards in a, in a fine fantasy game against Green Bay. Green Bay, an atrocious rush defense the entire season. I mean, since the breakout, you know, we've seen Swift over that mark three times. Uh, 75 yards against Tennessee. I'm going to buy it. It's the... I, I'm going to buy the volume here. So if Stafford's out, obviously the, the, the offense gets worse, but they will probably re try to rely on DeAndre Swift a little bit more, and I think that Swift can get it done to get to 75. Yeah, I I, I had Swift in as my original running back start of the week this week. I, I, I liked what we saw last week from him. Obviously, before the concussion injury, he was starting to catch fire. He looked like he was going to be a league winner. Um, and then... Stafford being out made me go, man, I I don't know if you can really rely on Swift, but 75 total yards against Tennessee, a team that is not good against the pass, is not good against the run. They're not good on defense right now, but they are good on offense. I think they'll score on the Lions. They're going to need some yards for the Lions. I think DeAndre Swift will be involved in both the rushing and passing game, so I'm going to buy. I did the I think it's a great thing, line. Jason. I, I, could, I was like, DeAndre Swift, I like it. I'm going to start of the week. Oh, no Stafford. Oh, I can't yeah. go that far. I'm going to buy with you guys. So we'll all buy DeAndre Swift over 75. Kareem Hunt at the Giants. Is he a top 20 running back this week? It was great to see him uh, explode uh, on yeah. Monday Night Football, number four overall this past week. Previously, though, in, in good matchups, right? Tennessee, Jacksonville, you ended up with uh, outside the top 30. 29th against Philadelphia the week prior. We hadn't seen this, and, and it really came down to finally... Be, I mean, he's the leading receiver on the team. This was not something we had seen previously. He had been in that 4-3-2 category in terms of targets, and this was a big improvement for him, taking on the Giants in New York. Top 20 running back, Kareem Hunt. What do you think? I think Kareem Hunt all season has been a fourth-quarter guy. 
You watch the beginning of the game, and you're like, man, he's doing nothing. He's not involved enough, and you're really sad. And then at the end of the game, you're like, oh, he's awesome. But it's better in those matchups where the other teams are scoring a lot. Now, obviously, Baltimore, he was great because they had to keep pushing the ball. They had to keep passing. They had to try to keep up with the Baltimore Ravens. I don't think that's going to happen against the New York Giants. So I'm going to – I mean, this is a really good line because I don't think this requires – a touchdown. Um, so I, I'm close here, but I'm going to sell. I'm going to be just on the outside. I, I'm going to sell as well. But the, the the upside for Kareem Hunt, Jason, like you said, it's not a shootout game with the New York Giants. The upside is three Garbage. quarters. Yeah, three quarters through. Nicholas Chubb has just, retired. Has yeah, he, they don't need Chubb in the fourth quarter, and they can just keep giving the ball over and over to Kareem Hunt. Uh, and on top of the you know the sporadic opportunities he gets through the the whole game, but top twenty, I'm I'm gonna sell on that mark because I think he's just outside of it. All right, I'm gonna buy it. I think he sneaks inside the top twenty this week. Giants Oof. over the last six weeks, twenty fourth, going in sync style here. Bye 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 bye. All right, that was buy yourself from pristine auction, <laughs> pristineauction.com. That just reminds me of the ridiculous it's gonna be may oh, stuff man. that you bring into <laughs> my it's world be may. uh pristine auction.com use the code ballers get a ten dollar credit lots of great stuff up there especially for the holiday season so you can check that out let's talk news news and notes from around the league panthers expect christian mccaffrey to miss the game on mm. Saturday. I expected him to miss the game on Saturday on the show yesterday, and this is the worst <laughs> for fantasy players. The worst. Unless you have Mike Davis and you don't have Christian McCaffrey like I do in one league where I keep thinking I don't have a running back option, and then Mike Davis is there. Yeah, it's uh, it's been a bad, bad year for Christian McCaffrey. Uh, I, I finally figured out when he's coming back. He's coming back in week 17 when most people's fantasy is done and it's irrelevant and will you be watching? Of course I'll be watching, but only because it's my job. Okay. All right. right. And I will I just want to throw out cuz I've seen the people talking on on Twitter like very upset with Christian McCaffrey and look he's I get that his injuries have let down your fantasy team, but next year I will still be drafting Christian McCaffrey with a top three pick. I I mean he'll he'll probably be my one on one. Derrick Henry enter the mix. I don't think mm. Derrick Henry enters the mix at one. He, he, he obviously he's great. He's a top uh, running back out there. But if I've got the first pick and I have the option to get someone who catches the ball as much as you know one of those true three down backs, I'm always going to take them over a world class two down back. Yeah, makes sense. Mike Tomlin says James Connors dealing with an injured quad. Uh Connor has an injury and seemingly talent issue this year. I, I mean watching that game last week, I think that game he was dealing with an injured quad. <laughs> <laughs> I'm, yeah. I'm guessing yeah, he fair. he had that all game because there was you should one play. definitely be able to know though. There like James was, Connor, you don't always know if he's dealing with injury with the way he looks on the field. But, man, I remember one play. He gets the ball, and he basically just stopped. He grabbed the ball with one hand, and it was like he was looking at the offensive line. He just stayed there, stood there, until a defense came and tackled him. I was like, what were you doing? But his quad hurt, apparently. I, so, I think the Steelers will be right drafting now. a running back next year. Yeah, yeah, Benny Snell's not the answer, and James Conner's not the answer. Uh, but I Park agree with you, Andy. He's he's not a start right now. He's he's a uh, uh oh. I have to start James Conner. Not a oh good. James Conner is active. Uh, Devontae Parker, slight hamstring strain, uncertain for this week's game against the Patriots. Uncertain for your fantasy lineups is not good. So I would be playing somebody else. He could reaggravate that. That is a. Uh, an easy injury to do that with. It's the Patriots. It's Tua. 
variables aplenty, find another option at wide receiver. Is that a fair summation? Absolutely. All right, Jameis Winston rumors abounding. Sean Payton says that Winston will get a chance to be the starting quarterback after Breeze retires. That's the stupidest thing I've ever heard. After Breeze retires, literally Jameis Winston is not under contract. He's not on your team. He's a one-year deal, right? I mean, at the end of this year, he's a free agent. You don't get to be like, all right, Winston, here's your chance. Well, I mean, if they if they pay him, then I guess he, he's got a high chance. <laughs> <laughs> That's the way it seems, but it's worth noting for Dynasty Leagues. And uh, Henry Ruggs was placed on the COVID list. Austin Eckler is on the injury report. Now, I will say this. Austin Eckler is bringing us uh, direct-to-consumer injury reports lately because he's got, he's got the Twitch thing going on. Um, he says he's 100% fine. Like, they asked him about why he showed up on the injury report. He says, I'm not injured. So... I wouldn't worry about Austin Eckler. Uh, he let us know when he was coming back, and uh, he's let us know that he's just fine. This is a rest situation. They probably said, hey, your quad looks like it could use a day. Mm -hmm. uh, Keenan Allen is on there with a hamstring situation. We we saw that at the end of the game. Mike Williams returned to limited practice. Um, nothing too scary right now for those three players. Yeah, it sounds like they are going to play. And before we get into the preview of that game, we got a new sponsor. Ladies and gentlemen, this is fantastic because we have a sponsor from mm. Rockstar Games. I'm a, a Rockstar! A sponsor that people thought we had a couple years ago when we were talking about Red Dead Redemption. But now we're talking about Grand Theft Auto Rockstar Games presents the biggest and most action-packed update to Grand Theft Auto Online yet, the Cayo Perico heist. Look, the oh, Montezuma yeah. crime family—they got a—they got a problem with their yep. supplier, the infamous drug lord El Rubio. Now it's up to you to find a way to infiltrate El Rubio's heavily secured private island home. I from... can do it. <laughs> of course, Jason can do it. Of course, yeah. Andy could do it. I could do it. You, dude. Grand Theft Auto Online just keeps going and keeps going and just keeps getting better and better. And if you haven't jumped in, there's still time because they're still cranking out incredible content for the online portion of the game uh, in access to Grand Theft Auto Online and the Cayo Perico heist. It's free with every copy of Grand Theft Auto 5. You can play on the PlayStation 4, backwards compa uh, compatibility on the PlayStation 5. It's rated M for Mature. Ladies and gentlemen, if, if you're playing video games at all, you're playing GTA Online, and now it just keeps getting even better. I You said Private Island. I immediately thought you were talking about Brooks's, Brooks, but this is, a diff <laughs> this is from the game content. We also want to thank uh, a new sponsor, North One. Listen, there's a problem in America. American business builders spend too much time trying to manage their money when they should be focused on growing their business. Uh, I have a solution to that problem. Uh, American business builders need a bank account that makes the hardest part of running their business easy. And that's what North One does. Let me talk about some of these key features here. They manage money, make payments, and pay bills from anywhere on uh, at home, on the go. Uh, you can connect your bank account uh, to the tools your business uses every day, like Stripe and the Cash App and QuickBooks and all of those must have uh, parts of your business. You can set up sub accounts to help you save for big expenses like rent, payroll, tax time. Uh, in Brooks's case, you know, like maybe uh, an extra home for in between seasons. Deposit and send checks digitally. No more searching for your checkbook. You can withdraw or deposit cash at ATMs nationwide. And it's, uh, listen, $10 a month with no hidden fees. That's what North One is bringing you right now and uh, you can sign up for a north one account in three minutes so pretty three much minutes yeah three minutes that's that's not a lot uh business make business banking made for america that is north one like i said three minutes sign up for an account let's get into the preview 30 night breakdown all right, the Los Angeles Chargers at four and nine taking on the Las Vegas Raiders at seven and six. The Raiders are three and a half point favorites. It's a fifty three point over under. I like that. I like not that. Not bad. That's not bad. And so uh, this is a rematch from Week Nine. The Raiders won thirty one to twenty six that week, so they would have hit the over. 
And uh, the Chargers dominated time of possession in that game. They dominated total yards, but they can't manage the clock. Holy and crap. We haven't talked cannot. about that. This this past week was the most embarrassing. This was oh. the most outlandish, ridiculous situation. Uh, yeah. After as many failures as, as this team has had this season, you just expect they will work on it and be prepared. There's still human beings that can figure this stuff out, right? Like, and then the next week comes and it's worse. And you go, how did you possibly manage the clock that poorly? They, they, they were down and they, they drove down, got in a field goal range and didn't, didn't get to kick. Yeah, no, they, they ran. They ran some people on the field. The f the field goal team was coming on. The, the the players were running off, and there was no time. And time just ran out during the transition, because they ran the ball with no timeouts left. Like, <laughs> it's a bad combination with a coach that clearly has a, a problem with time management, and then a rookie at quarterback. Right. That combination, because uh, you know, Justin Herbert. It's hard to expect a rookie to have a mastery of these situations. <laughs> You what are you know laughing what it, at? Uh, it just reminded me of one of my absolute all-time favorite football moments, which oh. was the Kirk the Cousins Kirk. <laughs> right before the half, driving down, needs to needs to spike the ball, stop the clock, and he takes a knee. That is 100% the Madden, I pushed the wrong button. <laughs> oh, no, I took a knee. I just need the clock out instead of stopping it. And you take a knee, you're like, yeah, I did it. Okay. Oh, whoops. You ever done that in Madden where you do the hurry up play, but you accidentally called the knee? Oh, and yeah. And so you think you're That's about to saying. call a quick play and you just take the knee. I mean, that moment, I forgot about that, Jason. The Kirk Cousins <laughs> knee at the end of the half. What, and who was it? Was it Pierre Garcon who who stared into his soul? Oh, my I think gosh. so. Yeah. And then what was it? Diggs on the outside that was like, what did you do? Oh. It was so good. Spectacular. All right. Uh, let's talk about this game, though. Derek Carr, Justin Herbert. Look, the over-under is nice. Herbert has been uh, great. Derek Carr has, has been great. The last two weeks, 300-plus cool. yards, 3-plus touchdowns. Every time you start saying good things about Derek Carr, we know what happens. Send in the car. Yeah, the car. Send in the car's the car. got no brakes. <laughs> Goes off the cliff. I, I don't know if I want to – do this guys <laughs> it, so Justin it, Herbert I'm comfortable with sure. I, have, I have a consistency there's two sets of consistency here Herbert's been very consistent and the Raiders defense has been consistent in terms of uh you know a willingness to give up points now they did fire their defensive coordinator this past week they are frustrated I don't know if you get a rebounded at home performance from them they are favored where are you with Herbert? I'm uh, playing Herbert with full confidence. Uh, yeah, I am as well. Go ahead, Jay. Uh, I, I think that Herbert has, obviously, he, he's been electric the entire season. The shoe dropped a couple of weeks ago where he had a really bad game against Bill Belichick, but this is not Bill Belichick. This, is the, this isn't a talented enough defense. Um, and, and, yeah, unless this defensive coordinator change just completely – uh, changes, changes everything. all their personnel. <laughs> yeah, I mean, it's I, I don't I don't see that solving the problem. the The biggest issue I would have, and the only reason I would sit Herbert in this matchup is if things come, you know, as as we get closer and tomorrow and today's practice report, if Keenan Allen yes. ends up actually hurt because we saw him leave the game now he's on the injury report you, it's it's hard to know on those Thursday night games what the injury report really means because you know there's the short week and they always give rest so they were going to give him rest no matter what but yeah, it doesn't uh, like mean Cam Akers in, yeah Black. exactly they were going to give him rest they said he's got a shoulder problem but but Keenan left the game so Keenan is my only worry here with regards to Herbert if Keenan was out I would not but with Keenan Mike Williams back Austin Eckler, uh, Herbert's got a, a good baseline. Austin Eckler, I, like I said, I don't think he's hurt at all. I think he plays. He's been targeted uh, a ton. He catches every single one of his targets. He is a must-play this week, week. Josh Jacobs, he had the trolling situation last week. We talk a lot about this. You know, when Josh, Josh Jacobs gets more opportunities and performs when the Raiders win, I think that's – Pretty true of a lot of running backs, but especially ones that are focused on that first and second down situation. 
and the way that they want to manage the clock. You know, Derrick Henry has had problems. Now, luckily, he plays on a team that wins more than the Raiders do, and so it's more reliable. But that's the kind of category I see Jacobs in is where you, ex if you expect them to control the clock, if you expect them to potentially be on the right side of things, which they are favored this week, then Jacobs gives you the kind of game you expect. Yeah, and the, the matchup here, like, it looks like the Chargers have been better against running backs. If you just look at the, the, the success, like looking at the stream finder, uh, how have running backs done against the Chargers? Well, Atlanta, Atlanta had, doesn't really have any running backs. New England, you get Damian Harris between the 20s, but you don't get goal line opportunities. Buffalo, same thing. Their running backs just do not produce. But for most of the year, uh, it, we've seen running backs have success against the Chargers. So I'm not... I'm not letting the the last few games skew my view of of uh, of what Josh Jacobs should do. Josh Jacobs is a is a top twenty play. Yeah, he's been and he's been inside the the RB two range every week, other than the week he got knocked out due to injury. So I think you just play him, move forward, hope for that uh, multi touchdown type of opportunity. Nelson Aguilar was brought up on the waiver show yesterday. He was five for one hundred and one. He seems like a very viable play this week like you need to move to nelson aguilar if you're the Devonte parker manager yeah. yes 100 percent. that's a perfect example of a player that a lot of people have they've you know uh, l last week the the chargers uh gave up the number one most fantasy points to the wide receiver position so this the the matchup is is there and the targets have been there the red zone utilization it's hard to say you know I'm relying on Nelson Aguilar in my semifinal you know, <laughs> matchup, but I, I, I think he should be a solid option. He should be a top 36 wide receiver, and he always has the upside to have a, a big finish because of the red zone work. Over the last four games, Nelson Aguilar has seen 22% of the targets. Like That's that's good enough, man. Well, and Henry Ruggs is now out, so it's just, yeah. it's just you know, set up for success for Aguilar, and Jason made a good point on Sunday Live this past week, which nice job, by the way, uh, filling in for Mike. And on Sunday Live, you reminded people that, look, what do you want to do? You want to win the title or do you want your team to look good on paper? Sometimes you win with these players at the end of the year that don't look like they should be in your lineup. And you brought up uh, Tim Hightower uh, with a running back for the Tim New Orleans Saints. Oh, no, no, no Tim Hightower. Hightower. Yeah, okay. Although Tim okay. Patrick fits the bill too yeah. because, um, look, you just need to win. That's yeah. that's at the end of the day. And what better team to talk about? Just win, baby. Nelson Aguilar. <laughs> so uh, Hunter Henry, eight targets last week. Always a, a, a possibility at the tight end position for a touchdown. Darren Waller, you play him each and every week. No questions asked. Oh, yeah. All the way through to the end of the year. Yeah, and, and Hunter Henry, I mean, of of the Chargers players who are hurt, you know, uh, Eckler, Keenan Allen Limited, Mike Williams is the one I'm most concerned about. I mean, he got knocked out of essentially the entire game, and if, if Mike Williams is out, I expect more downfield shots to Hunter. Yes, it's been a, a couple of weeks since he's had a uh, a good week at the tight end position, but... He had three straight top 12 weeks before that against Buffalo, the Jets, and Miami. A reminder to take your Thursday night players out of your flex position. Make sure you have uh, injury and COVID flexibility later in the week. Otherwise, I think we're ready to do some mailbag, oh, Mike. The, the last one I would throw out is uh, it's a bit of a desperation, but maybe you're in a PPR, but Hunter Renfro with, uh, with Henry Ruggs being out, I think that you're going to see a – a significant rise in targets for for Henry. Yeah, and the Chargers have been or Hunter. Sorry, uh, Chargers have been pretty good against the tight end position over the last six weeks. So maybe Waller doesn't get every one of those PPR type of targets. So I think that's a that's a good point. Um, the accountant can be out there, yes. managing the books for you if you're desperate. So let's do some mailbag. 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 Yeah. Not football time. <laughs> Look, we've moved past that. Uh, all right. 302-464-TFFB. That's the voicemail hotline. If you have a question for the show, you can also go to the website, thefantasyfootballers.com. Click the submit a question button. 
Let's kick this off with a voicemail question. Yo, 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 Bobbers. Yo, yo, yo. Happy holidays. Four-point league, would you start Justin Herbert or Tom Brady? Oh, man. Four-point per touchdown league. Oh, uh, Big I, Herb or the plant man. Yeah, I think I'm going to go with Tom Brady in this one. Um. Tom Brady against the Atlanta Falcons. Yeah, who are you know on the year they're they're dead last against opposing fantasy quarterbacks. So there's there's opportunity there. I it's funny because I feel like Brady has, I think genuinely this week Brady has like a little bit higher ceiling and a lower floor, and I feel like Herbert is pretty safe to be at least in that middling tier. Like Brady can be outside the top twenty. That's just he's shown us he can do that. He did it. He's done it twice in the last five weeks. Yeah, I, but he's I, also I, had a number one overall finish. Yeah, I don't see uh, Brady having a low floor personally. Uh, his low floor is, you know, when when you've got a really good pass rush, when you've got the the Saints, you know. Uh, well, he's twentieth last week against Minnesota, though. That was supposed to be a smash matchup for Brady. What do you think about that finish? Well, if you remember the game, and I I, I remember it closely because I was playing Brady. Brady was was very good. He, he had a nice deep touchdown to. Uh, uh, Scotty Miller had a nice one to Gronk, and then all of a sudden the game got out of control, and they didn't need to. They didn't need him at all anymore, um, and they just ran the the clock, ran the ball out, and that was that was the game. Um, however, because remember the first quarter was like deleted by the Vikings, so that was a little bit of a weird game script. I don't think it was sure. Brady being bad, and against Atlanta, who's uh, we've talked about this recently, been great against running backs. With a broken finger, Ronald Jones, who might miss the game, I just don't think they're going to be able to run the ball, and they'll be able to pass. So I, I do like Brady. He's, I mean, we might be talking about. I would, go, about him I a would go Brady. More. Yeah. Mike. I know. <laughs> Look, the plant man knows how to win in the playoffs. Uh, I, I'm with you guys. I, I lean Brady here. Slightly. All right. Here, here's an annual debate that comes up this time of year in the fantasy football community. And uh, Justin wrote in about it, but I've seen it all over the place. And I also am in leagues where they go different directions on this. Um, Justin asks, should non-playoff teams be participating in the waivers? Uh, we had a non-playoff team drop Mike Davis last week. It changed the playoff landscape tremendously in our league, including a heated discussion in our chat group. And, uh, you know, I there's nuance to this question to me. Sure. I agree. There's redraft leagues, right, where you are, you know, complete. Like, if you're not in the playoffs, the season's over. You're going to draft a brand new team next year. Uh, how do you feel about this? I mean, I'm in leagues where if you're not in the playoffs, you are not eligible for pickups uh, during waiver day. I'm in leagues like all of our leagues where you can participate week to week in the waiver pickups. But we, are, we play in at least multi keeper leagues most often. So Right. And and obviously if you are in any kind of a, a keeper league situation where something you do this year can still have an effect on next year, then then of course you should be making transactions. You should be picking up possible, you know, rookie guys that could uh, have a, a veteran injury or a, a, a free agent signing away uh that you could keep next year. But in those redraft only leagues the way that I view it is if your league doesn't want these transactions to make, that just needs to be the official stance of the league. Without that, I always encourage everybody to play through, play on, keep making your best decisions and waiver wire pickups. And that's going to help you next year. It, it, you know, we talk about, oh, well, your team will be better next year in a, in a keeper league. If you do pick up the, uh, you know, the undrafted free agent who ends up becoming a thing next year and you can have him be your keeper. Well, you want to know the truth. Your team will be better next year for you paying attention and playing through to the end of the season because you will be better as the general manager. So I am in favor of it. Now, specific to this question, dropping Mike Davis. That's a problem. That's a problem. That's that. That's not helping your team in any. I mean, we don't know the context of who he picked up or or whatnot, but it it seems like that's just bad. That's just that's stupid. So I would uh, uh, I would say you can't have things that ruin the integrity of the league. Mike, did you want to weigh in here? I I will say this: like if you if you play through, you're going to reduce the odds of this Mike Davis situation happening because you know if that's that is like the, true the precedent of your league uh, to keep going, you know, p 
people do consolation brackets. People do uh, points based week. Like Mike's in a league where they give a reward every week for the total highest points. I think it's a really strategic, smart way uh, if you're in a money league to have a little bit of a weekly bonus. Cause then if you play through the integrity of your league stays strong and there's something to play for, even if you're not in the playoffs. Yeah. I'm, I'm with Jason that play through. Uh, I, I want to win. I don't want to be last place. I don't want to be second to last place. If, if I didn't make the playoffs, I still want to finish as high as I possibly can. And okay. You know, I, I don't understand why you need to shrink the pool of, of fantasy managers who get access to these, these players. Like, I mean, you're still going to have then people complaining of like, well, this person had the the waiver priority. And it's like, no, just keep playing all the way through. I, I get that you're in a much higher stakes situation than me if you're in the playoffs and I am not, but I'm still going to play through. And I'm, I'm trying to be a bit of a realist in the fact that, look, if you're eliminated from a redraft league playoffs, you really... You need that's why I like the whole weekly reward type of situation set up at the beginning of the year because we're human too. Like Jason's right. And if you want to be a better player, you're going to pay attention at the end of the year because so much happens that defines the next year. But you're also probably you if you just missed the playoffs or you're burned or you're feeling the competitive juices aren't there. That's why it's nice to set up the format of your league to incentivize that a little bit. Or set up the format of your league to outlaw it. You know, if if the league yeah. majority says we're a redraft league, it's 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 bush league when you do that, which I completely disagree with. But if that's how you feel, then put it to a vote. And if the majority of your league feels that way, that should be the rule. Mm -hmm. But if that's not the rule, then yeah. you're playing by the rules. Yep, agreed. And obviously, it should go without saying, but you're not. Don't solicit other owners to to sign players or oh, do no. anything to benefit you. Uh, let's go to another voicemail question. Hey, Ballers, who would you start at flex this week between Cam Akers against the Jets or T.Y. Houston? Thanks, <laughs> Love the Show. Ooh. Oh, man. Oh, I'm playing Cam Akers in that situation. I'm going uh, Cam Akers. Yeah, I mean, you still have two years of hoping T.Y. Hilton was good and two weeks where he was. That's my argument. And you have 29 carries for Cam Akers last week. Uh, yes. Excuse me. Three weeks where he's been good. <laughs> That's true. Um, but but Jonathan Taylor could have 29 carries this week, and you never see T.Y. Hilton. That is a possibility. Um, that is that is a possibility. I, I you know, It's funny because when he said Cam Akers or, like, I felt like I'm like, well, I'm done. <laughs> it's Cam Akers. Yeah. But then he said T.Y. Houston. I was like, oh, dang. He's going to be good. I would I would still take the volume. Whenever you've got that razor thin decision between um, two really good options, I think they both have uh, great weeks. Then you take whoever has the more guaranteed volume, and that would be Cam Akers. And it's not just the volume. It's He's playing the Jets. <laughs> like, this is Cam Akers is in a smash spot. All right. Um, Twitter question from Claire. Claire says, is it worth hanging on to Alexander Madison as the cook manager? What is your line for dropping him? Is it worth it to stash a DST uh, and or to block my opponent? I love this question. I love the way you're thinking. I am in leagues right now where I'm, I was in the studio yesterday and talking to Jason, and I have a matchup, CBS league that I'm in. Uh, it's a charity league for St. Jude that uh, – I won last year. You hear that, Jamie Eisenberg? We're, <laughs> oh, we're, he's coming for you. Oh. We're in a semifinal matchup, him and I. And I thought about, like, I have Josh Allen, and I don't need Taysom Hill, and Taysom Hill might not start for more than one more week. And I'm sitting there going, well, I, I need to pick somebody up. Can I drop Taysom Hill? Uh, which kind of feels like this Madison decision, right? It's a, it's a gamble to drop somebody that someone else could pick up. And I looked at my opponent's roster, and I said, he might pick up Taysom Hill and play him against me. I have to hang on to him. So I didn't let him let him go. Um, those are the type of, of, of gambles that you're making here. Now, if Cook goes down, well, it, it would have to happen right this week. So having Madison this week isn't going to help you. So you would be holding on to Madison for a one-week potential Cook injury, and then you have to weigh that out against the benefit of stashing a DST or blocking your opponent. That's exactly... 
it comes down to the what other running backs do you have and so like where is that line of you know heading into the next week and your option to replace Dalvin Cook should you somehow make it through through the and so, and uh withstand the victory so to speak of a Dalvin Cook injury you're playing like Damian Harris or Duke Johnson I mean those are the types of players I would imagine you'd be choosing between that or a starting Alexander Madison I now, would we, I would drop Madison I would let him go I, I would drop Madison as well and here's here's why because you Andy Andy illustrated it perfectly you're not playing Madison this week he's not of value if if Dalvin Cook gets injured on the first play Madison is still irrelevant for you this week and you probably lose the game um losing you know getting a zero from Dalvin Cook the following week should Dalvin Cook get you through the whole game and get injured on the last play of the game so now this is the best situation where I held on to Alexander Madison are you going to start Alexander Madison against New Orleans in the championship week one of the best defenses against the run. He's not an obvious must start just because he's replacing Dalvin Cook. So that's they use your Mike Boone. They use CJ Ham. They they'd be annoying. Amir Abdullah. Abdullah. So it, it's one of those where I I think you are better served at this point now that we are to the week we are in, uh, assuming that you have a week sixteen championship, week seventeen against Detroit. That would change things, but if it's a week sixteen championship, I'm I'm letting uh, Alexander Madison go in order if I can make a worthy transaction to block someone, pick up a defense, do something important. You can win your week blocking your opponent yes. from a defense. Can also lose your week. Yeah, thanks, Mike. Thanks, Mike. <laughs> we we did a little bit of a rehash this morning of things that transpired this past weekend. One of them being that I I paid one fab. I had one fab dollar. Mike had none to pick up DeAndre Washington, who was starting for Miami. Yeah, I got the instant dap from Mike. He sent me a note. He said, hey, nice job on the block because mm -hmm. Mike was searching for some options. He had an injured Antonio Gibson and DJ Moore, and he was not, comp believe it or not, not confident in Miles Sanders. Oh, I believe it. I was not. If and, you uh, got Washington, would you have played him over Miles Sanders? I'll bet I you cannot would. say for sure. The, you you wanted but, to, but it was it was at least going to be part of the the thought process. <laughs> and if you had got him, then there's that kind of one of the reasons why I liked Washington more was the vested. You know, it's like the bias of signing somebody. You spend your fab on them, you pick them up that morning. It's like, oh, well, I blocked Mike, but but is this valuable now? And right. And oh, the so, butterfly effect, man. Oh my because, gosh! Because I was going to spend five fab dollar to block my opponent from getting <laughs> DeAndre Washington. I but I couldn't <laughs> because ESPN did not have Christian McCaffrey listed as out, so I couldn't move him and open up the roster oh. spot. So you got him instead of me, yeah, yeah, which know. means Mike didn't get him, which means Miles Sanders plays, which means you're out of the playoffs. There has to be – look, people, people play fantasy football, right? There's a lot of them. There has to be a like psychiatrist office <laughs> where someone walks in and they lay down on the couch – and the psychiatrist thinks they're about to hear about a marital issue or about a work issue. They're growing up with their childhood. Childhood issue, pay daddy issues, whatever. And the first word out of that person's mouth is a start-sit decision that they made this past week. There has <laughs> to be someone somewhere because I know I'm going through it right now. Is the show over yet? Um, no, I'm just kidding. I'm kidding. All right, we're moving on. YouTube question. I said there'd be some 2021 questions. Here, here is uh, one from Tyler Nicholson over on YouTube. Is there a slam dunk pick for number one overall in fantasy leagues next year? It's funny because we kind of brought this up. Uh, slam dunk, I don't know. It, it'll be Dalvin Cook and Christian McCaffrey related. And in that case, uh, what I thought about earlier, and Jason, I'm going to give you the chance to just weigh in with your opinion too, obviously. I don't know if every McCaffrey question was answered that did exist before the season, which was new head coach, new quarterback, new offense, new situation. Now, we did see him for a game. Three. Did we see him for three games? Yeah, and yeah he he, he's great. been in three games, and he was unfathomably awesome. He only came back for three. one during the back half of the year, right? Correct. Okay, and he and he was obviously, like you said, he was incredible. He was, so maybe those questions and, have been answered in and three And we've games seen three. Mike Davis 
In the meantime, a, a, a journeyman backup who's had a ton of fantasy production. To me, Christian McCaffrey is a clear cut one. Here's here's his fantasy finishes, Andy. Week one, the RB two. Yeah. Week week two, he played sixty four percent of the snaps. Got hurt. Finished as the running back six on the week. Comes back against the Kansas City Chiefs is the running back two. Well, I I think Dalvin <laughs> Cook is it's fair to put him in the conversation. Yeah, I because I agree. of his explosiveness. The same type of utility in the passing game. I get it. Um, it's you know, ironic that the knock against Cook is his injuries. Well, yeah. and, it, and it's still going to be – that's still a dialogue point for Christian McCaffrey to me is is you came into the year saying maybe they want to reduce the load. Now, they didn't do it, and he was great in those games. But he, he was hurt all year. Three injuries, quad, shoulder, knee. They have to manage Christian McCaffrey if you pay him that amount of money, don't they? Well, we say they do, and then they never need. To, they never do. But I yeah, think they play him. But I the also injuries think, have stacked up this year. I also think that some of these missed games this season have been because of the situation of the schedule, because of the situation of the team, and the fact that they're playing for the future, and they don't want to rush him back. They want him at full strength next year uh, versus getting back in week fifteen against a you know an irrelevant game. So I, I think that's that's. Part of the games he's missed, I think he's missed at least three games this season where if they were in the runnings fighting for a playoff spot, he would he would have played. So really next year, you're looking at Cook, McCaffrey. You're looking at uh, the potential for who else? Uh, uh, I mean, Kamara. I would throw out Kamara. Bar Barkley's going to be in the top five discussion again, isn't he? Probably, yeah. yeah. And Kamara, depending on the quarterback situation for the Saints. Mm -hmm. uh, so, and then Derrick Henry. Yeah, yeah, and uh, probably you're going to start hearing Jonathan Taylor come up in the first round if the end of this first year first round, is, yeah, it, not not know. number one overall, but I agree. You'll no, you'll but be probably talking. ahead of like the Zeke category, maybe. Uh maybe, maybe. That's kind of fun to ruminate I when, can't you, when you've wait, been knocked man. out by Mike. All right. YouTube, do I start Brandon Ayuk or Justin Jefferson in a PPR league? Oh, me, oh, my. Oh, Justin Jefferson brother. or Brandon Ayuk? Jefferson has a tough matchup against Chicago. They are fourth on the year. Brandon Ayuk is all alone. Now, you don't know the quarterback. They have talked about looking at different quarterback situations, but he's got the best matchup in football against Dallas. I think it's Brandon Ayuk this week, as much as I love Justin Jefferson. Jefferson was 10 targets, 8 for 135 the last time they played the Chicago Bears, and that was in Chicago. So it's yeah, not but, that Justin Jefferson can't get it done. It, Why'd it, you have to bring that up, man? It, 16, tar 16 for targets for Brandon Ayuk. 16 targets this past week without Debo Samuel against Dallas. Yeah. The whole, not, and I nice. know. Shanahan builds his entire offense around one target. He does it, and he's come out and said he does it. He'll build 85% of the game plan around Brandon Ayuk. I, uh, I have them back-to-back -back in my rankings, oh, and man. I I think I would go Brandon Ayuk, who we will also talk about on Thursday. Let, oh, let me just bring brother. this up, Let me because let, maybe we don't think about it because Debo coming back, with Debo coming back, Last five games for Brandon Ayuk that he's played, he's been a top 12 wide receiver three of those times. The two weeks that he did not make the top 12, he was 16th and 20th. You will not go wrong with Brandon Ayuk. Jefferson's right. volume at many times this year and the game plan for Minnesota is Dalvin Cook. You can have four target games for Justin Jefferson. You can have three reception games for him. But it hurts me to, to say bench him. But I'm going to go Brandon Ayuk. Ayuk has been incredible. Ayuk in... <laughs> Thank you. Hadouken! <laughs> oh, we've got it. Yeah. Yeah. Um all right. Let's uh let's go with this question from Laura because I love it. My husband and I made it into the semifinals this week and are up against one another. Oh no. I'm one of those people that's been streaming quarterbacks, Jalen Hurts or Phillip Rivers this week. <laughs> Both of These them are great questions. Were the streaming quarterbacks from yesterday? Yeah, the, sh the show. They are. They are both excellent plays. Jalen Hurts against Arizona. P. River uh, going to be up against the Houston Texans with T. Y. Houston probably doing his magical act again. 
I'm going to take Phillip Rivers. Man. You've got one game of game film now for Jalen Hurts. It matters. It really does. I'm going to take P. River. This this is brutal. I think that Hurts... The, the, the probability that Jalen Hurts has a bad game is lower than Phillip Rivers. Like, I think Hurts is safer. I think his floor is, is safer. I, I think the ceiling is safer on Hurts than Rivers just because Rivers doesn't ever have a ceiling. Uh, if he finishes as a quarterback one, it's like usually the quarterback 10. His great games this year um have been that way he's you know he's he's been playing great football and I love Rivers this week his last five weeks are the quarterback 13 10 10 17 15 all good all performances right, all right I'm, I'm gonna switch but it's it's tough it's the playoffs oh. I'm gonna switch because I I feel like Jalen Hurts if it goes right is what Jason's saying he could give you top five Phil Rivers going right is number 10 yeah Philip Rivers I'm, cha- having I'm a changing good game to is upside eight, in the nine, playoffs 10. I'm going to change. The, I want you to. I'm just happy I was able to talk someone off of Philip Rivers. <laughs> Take that, Philip. I feel like that you have like an LLC just for that. Like you have your own side business and all you do is consult people out of Philip Rivers. That's after right. what happened. Are you last considering year. starting Philip Rivers? <laughs> I want Call to see that. <laughs> the, info, the infomercial for that would be spectacular. Well, what's funny is I, I think Philip Rivers is a very good play this week. I, I think uh, people out there that are going to start him, that's not that's not bad. That's not a negative. Um, yeah, but you know who's a great play this week? Jonathan Taylor against Houston. Yeah. I mean, he may have 30 carries. This game well, could be, and, and the defense is so good for Indianapolis. This game could be over quick. You, 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 I mean, look here. You saw it two weeks ago. Two weeks ago, Phillip Rivers went out and was excellent against this Houston Texans team. 285 and two touchdowns have finished as the quarterback 17. Yeah. 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 All right. That'll do it for today's show. A reminder for all of you supporting the show at jointhefoot.com. We have the footcast later today. Starts of the week tomorrow. Matchups. Football time, Mike. <laughs> it is tomorrow. <laughs> Goodbye. <laughs> Thank you for listening to another episode of the Fantasy Footballers Podcast. Join our fantasy football community on jointhefoot.com and follow us on Twitter at the FF Ballers. <laughs>